Hi, my name is Grace Shalom Hopkins and welcome to another episode of Spin Weekly. Today we are learning how to spin a bat, but in a unique way because I don't like to be told what to do. I don't. I don't like somebody saying this is how you spin a bat. This one way is the only way. That's a lie. There's lots of different ways. So here are several that I like. There are more, but these are the ones that I really know that are like umbrella categories that you can expand upon in your own practice because we have options here. Here we listen to the fiber, we listen to ourselves, we listen to our wheel, we listen to the colors, to the textures, to the project, we listen to all kinds of different influences when we make a decision. Because like I don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> so if you don't like to be told what to do, <laughs> let me give you some options. All right, so let's start with this beautiful Hufflepuff inspired bat. I have links to the artist down below, Feather Tail Fiber Arts. And we're gonna do this with Ye old Zigzag. This used to be way more popular than it is now. And the way you do this is you pull the fiber in this zigzag pattern. I'm not really gonna verbalize how you do this because I feel like if I try to verbalize it, it's gonna be a heck of a lot more confusing. You kinda just have to like visualize it. <laughs> um, now you're probably wondering about the zigzag uh, armpit situation. Like how do you spin the little armpit portion? So you start at one side like you're spinning comb top or roving and then when you get to the little armpit section, you just kind of follow the way the fiber naturally wants to be. You can also just break it there and attach it. See here in this part of the video, we're at the armpit and you can see how I'm pretty intentionally spinning it across the top. You're just gonna wanna watch out for uh, huge leaps in diameter or clumping. Just kind of watch the consistency of the fiber that you're spinning. Don't be afraid to break and rejoin. Don't be afraid to stop the wheel and let a little twist out. See, I'm gonna break it and then I'm gonna pre-draft it a little. So you're gonna wanna work with the, the armpit section. <laughs> Your armpits need love is what I'm trying to say. Give them some grace. Uh, otherwise, you spin the zigzag bat the same as you would any other type of fiber, just follow it down the line. Think of it as the end-to-end -end version of a bat. <laughs> um, so here I'm going to use my signature center pole ball and ply them together. I am showing the plying because in part two of this video, I will be showing you the swatches so you can actually see the difference between the different preps. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and also it's just really pretty to watch plying happen. And I also think it's good to remind people that knots happen with center pole balls. <laughs> also, it's a, a windstorm out today. I live in Kansas. So if you hear any really weird background noises that sounds kind of like a dying robot, it's my house. All right, here on the next technique, we are just dividing this with the grain into strips. This is the same as you would do with a roving. If you've watched my how to spin roving video, you have seen this technique. Um, this is another one of my absolute favorites because you could divide the bat in half and two ply um, one half to the other half. If you have a color gradient bat, this is a good way to control or reorder those colors. Um, I feel like the strip method is the easiest way to control a bat, and it's a really good way to move around add-ins as well. So if you have huge clumps of add-ins, where this bat did have huge clumps of add-ins, and if I was going to spin it myself, not for this demo video, I probably would have stripped it down and then kind of looked over where the clumps of add-ins were picked the big ones out and redistributed it across the top. So like you can see in this shot, there is a piece of gold fire star. Like that sucker is a piece on his own. I would have redistributed him throughout the bat. 
but it's hard to kind of see that until you strip it into more manageable chunks. So that's a good um, bat management tip, especially if you want to spin a thinner diameter yarn. So in my book, Bat, which I have links down below, I go into extreme detail on all of the different ways you can reorder your fiber and through prep. So it's not a technical manual, it's all about using simple prep techniques like the ones in this video to completely transform the color and texture presentation of the bat you're working with. So if you like some of the ideas I'm sharing with you here, you'll probably like my book Bat. So plug plug link down below right at the same time is this super beautiful bobbin shot like you're feeling the vibes <laughs> uh, and the lighting the shadowy lighting uh, so good but yeah when you're doing a strip you can also use it to your advantage with plying so I'm using a center pole ball but like I said you can be a lot more um, picky about how you lay those out for different plying methods. But here we're talking about Rolex, faux Rolex in particular. So you strip down a piece of your bat and you kind of fluff it out with your hands and then you roll them up. Now you don't have to be too crazy about this. My advice is don't try to roll it too tightly. Like I haven't had good luck rolling it around dowels to try and make sort of a poony situation. Um, I also would recommend paying attention to the direction of the fiber so you get them fairly parallel with each other and not like rolling on a diagonal. That would be obnoxious. To actually spin this sucker, you just spin it like you would a Rolag. I have two how to spin Rolag videos that are linked down below if you want them, but pretty much you just join from the end and pull back. So Rolag is a woolen prep, and because this is a faux lag, it's not strictly a woolen prep, but unlike the combed top faux lags in my How to Spin Roving video, this is a combed fiber preparation. A bat is, well, it's carded, but when you roll it into a faux lag, it behaves more like a fiber tube is what I'm trying to say. Um, the spinning police have a very specific definition of woolen versus worsted, the faux lags of both bats and roving don't really fit into their worldview. But um, it's something to take into consideration if you do this method. It does create kind of a mock woolen tube situation. So you could pair that with a longer draw and get a bit of a warm lofty yarn. So that's a, that's a consideration. Faux lags are nice because you can kind of control how you put the colors with each other, but you don't control how they come out of the faux lag onto your wheel. So it's nice to have both the control and the organic nature in one method. So I like that a lot for newbies who are just messing with prep. Now this next one is from the fold. I, however, recommend the pieces that I have shown here, I think are about halfway too long. I would have split it where I'm folding it. So where that fold is, I would have pulled it apart again and folded it over my finger because this width of fold, I guess, worked so great for the add-ins. It was perfect, but once I spun through the add-ins, the f base fiber, the merino, was a lot shorter of a staple length and caused me trouble there. So that's something to take into consideration um, because pretty much all I got with this was huge clumps of longer staple length add-in fibers and then kind of stubby, awkward merino base fiber trailing along behind. <laughs> I love the ease of this method though. The actual spinning itself, I don't know if you can really see this in the video, but 
it was so satisfying to spin and the draft was nice. It was very easy to control diameter. It was very easy to work with some of those obnoxious, slippery fibers. I didn't feel like I was struggling with the bamboos or the silks the way that I did in some of the other preps. Gotta stop and have a sides time. Bean was really hands-on with this particular video. She has been learning how to treadle so good. Um, I think I'm about to be ready to have her ply. Um, Ashley Martineau from Spin Nouveau really advocates for teaching people to ply before they spin. So if you're a super newbie at a wheel, that's a hot tip for you. You can ply together two commercial yarns at your brand new wheel and kind of get the feel for the motion before you throw in drafting. So I think we'll, we'll do that with the bean. <laughs> but from the fold, highly recommend Be Aware of Add-ins is that in summary. Next up we have Ye Old Spin From The Corner. Again, this is like an OG art yarn, art bat technique that used to be all the rage. And I still think it is. Um, this and chunking are probably the most popular. So you just pick a corner and you spin from it. You kind of end up working at a diagonal down through the middle of the bat which is a unique situation. Um, I find that I kind of naturally end up stripping it out or spinning it off the top like it's a giant piece of comb top. So I don't actually like this method. Um, I also think it's difficult to control the color presentation. So if you were to spin something like a gradient or any type of bat that had a very specific color play. Unlike this one that's just kind of uh, consistent through the whole thing. But if there's a structured color play, I think it's very difficult to control that when spinning from the corner. So keep that in mind when you do try this one. I think it's best for semi-solids or all over consistent color texture play. Um, but it's supposed to be a beginner friendly technique because there's like no prep required. You just like sit the bat on your lap and do the thing. But again, like I said before, I think it actually causes clumpage and frustration with new spinners because you don't have control. You don't know where you're going. You don't know where you came from. If you're having trouble with this and you've used it before, try the stripping method or the chunking method. It may be more favorable to you. Otherwise, you wanna live wild, knock yourself out with this. All right, so I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button. I wanna hear your comments, your thoughts, your feelings, your suggestions for future videos. Put them in the comment section down below. If you like the visuals of this video and you're a Patreon person, you've already seen that I have the Vibes music only version of this up there. But if you're not, you could become a Patreon person and buy my groceries, pay my bills, keep me having power so I can charge my phone bat or my camera battery. This is not my phone. I do have my phone for notes, so I guess both of those matter. <laughs> but you could also get access to those and the special playlist where they hang out. So you can follow the link down below if you wanna do that. Also, you may be curious, this is a Spinolution Queen Bee that I'm spinning on in this video, also pointing to in real life, she's right there. If you liked that and have any thoughts or questions, you can head over to the uh, link down below labeled Spinolution Queen Bee. That is my shop, I am a dealer, and I would be happy to answer questions and uh, enable your spinning adventures with what I think is the best line of wheels, and I've tried several. I never really had any like strong affiliation to any of them until I met Spinolution, and actually, I really didn't want to like spin illusion because everybody likes spin illusion and I don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> but then I'm like, ah, there's a reason everybody likes these because they're the best. <laughs> so anyway, if you want to find out more about spin illusion wheels, you can hit me up following the link down below. And until next time, bye.